<clears throat> so the four numbers we're going to start getting into, all right, you need all four quantum numbers to accurately or as close to accurately identify where electrons are located. All right, there's four different ones. We're going to get into those in just a second. Remember Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. All right, you can't know the exact location and velocity of an electron at the same time. Our first quantum number is called the principal quantum number. Its symbol is N. All right, its symbol is N. Make sure you know that. Each one of these four numbers are going to have their own symbol. Lowercase n is the principal quantum number. And again, if it's capitalized or lowercase, it does matter. It makes a difference. This indicates the main energy level. Now, one thing, guys, level and shell, they are used interchangeably. Okay, they are used interchangeably. You'll hear me mix those up, but they mean the exact same thing. For the principal quantum numbers, those main energy levels, they are always positive integers only. You will never have a negative. You'll never have like half, bless you, okay, or quarter. It'll be all positive integers. So one, two, three, and so on. As n increases, so does the energy and distance from our nucleus. So think about it. The, what we, when we're talking about principal energy levels, if we think about it in terms of Bohr's model, which again, doesn't work for anything other than hydrogen, but if we think about it like that, the energy levels, folks, are the rings around the nucleus. Those different um, levels that we have there that we can visually see. Think about it like this. If we're starting at this point on both lines, obviously you can see the distance for this guy right here is further than this guy because he's further away. Bigger circle around our nucleus. Okay, but if we're trying to run a race, but it's a different kind of race, now where there's going to be one winner, everyone's going to tie. Which one of these would have to exert more energy to get around its path in the same time as the other guy? The big one, right? He's got a greater distance to travel, therefore it's going to take a lot more energy for him to get all the way around the ring back to his starting point to tie this guy who has a lot less space to go. So that's how you hopefully can make sense to you that, hey, as you go further from the nucleus, your energy has to go up as well. And we talked about that in the last unit when those electrons got excited. They jumped up to a higher energy level because it takes more energy. Then they emit that back down in the form of what? Light, which is called a what? Quanta or a photon, good, which is just energy being emitted. That's when we see the different colors. Okay. Now, a very quick way for us to be able to identify how many total electrons are on an energy level is using this little equation right here, 2n squared. All right, 2n squared will tell you right away how many electrons are on any given energy level. So if I said the second energy level, remember your order of operations. So I'm going to plug it in, 2 times 2, because that's the energy level I'm at, squared. What do I have to do first? Okay, parentheses first. That's already a 2. We plug that in. What comes next? The little to the exponent. You've got to do the exponent next. Make sure you square it. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So the second energy level, guys, can hold up to 8 electrons. If I said the fourth energy level, the same um, formula. Plug in your 4. You're going to do the exponent first. So 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 electrons. And you're going to see how this is going to come into play um, with some of the patterns that we're going to look at here over the next between today and tomorrow. The big idea with this unit, folks, is all is about recognizing patterns. Whether it's electron configurations or it's the periodic trends in the second half of this unit, you got to be able to recognize the patterns. So that's our first quantum number. That's kind of like saying, oh, this is the state we're living in. All right. The electron cloud is the country. Now the principal energy level is kind of like what state you're in. So we're starting to narrow it down a little bit further. Can I go on to the next slide? The next of our four quantum numbers, and actually, I'm going to pause. Our second quantum number, guys, is called the orbital quantum number. Its symbol is a lowercase l. All right, it's a lowercase cursive l. Okay. Each subshell contains orbitals. So what we call the orbital quantum number, guys, is on that um, that principal energy level. There are sublevels. Okay, there are sublevels. So think about it, going back to the analogy that you guys did on your worksheet. 
What do you think the energy levels are in terms of that worksheet, the boarding house model? The floor is your energy level. Within a floor, you had what? Rooms. That's what the orbital quantum number, guys, is like. It's like the sunny room or the pink room. Okay? It's the different rooms on the floor. So, that can be broken down even further. So, the quantum number, the orbital quantum number, all right, talks about two things. You've got the sublevel, which is your letters. So, the subshell or sublevel, these are your letters. SPDIF. That's how I remember it. SPDIF. SPDF, in that order. As we start doing electron configurations, it's important that you know the order of those letters, which is talking about the sublevels. Okay? That's like your room, the sunny room. Oh, look, S. The pink room. Oh, P. Oh, SP. Look at that. It's funny how they pick those names, right? All right? SPDF. Now, each one of those sublevels, guys, contains a different number of orbitals. The orbitals that are listed in there are like the bunks that you saw in your room. How many bunks did the sunny room have? Well, it just so happens that the S sublevel has one orbital. This is where you start seeing one of the first patterns of the unit. That pink room had how many bunks in it? Oh my goodness. The P sublevel has three orbitals. How many do you think the D has? Five. What's the pattern here? It's going up by two every time. F is going to have seven orbitals. Okay? So, again, the orbitals are like the bunk beds. So, you've got the principal energy level. If we break it down further, we've got our sublevel, which is just the SPDF. It's kind of like the room. Then we can break that down further. How many bunks are in the room? So, how many bunks could, how many um, people did each bunk hold in that analogy? Two. Guys, orbitals can hold up to two electrons each. So in the S sublevel, what are the total number of electrons that the S sublevel can hold? Auburn says two. Absolutely. What about the P sublevel? How many total electrons can it hold? Six. Three times two is six. What about D? Ten. And F? Absolutely. So this is something right here. When it talks about the number of orbitals, each orbital can hold two electrons. All right, so it's all a pattern, guys. Remember SPDIF in that order, and then it's 1, 3, 5, 7. The electrons will follow because all you have to do is double that number of orbitals, and that's the number of electrons you have. So we're starting to get more and more specific. So electron cloud is like the country. The principal energy level is like the state. The sublevel, the letter, is kind of like the county, and then the orbitals or the homes are kind of like the city that they're in. All right, we're going to have a visual to help us with that here in a few minutes. Now, um, how we start to fill those in, each energy level, guys, introduces a new sublevel. Okay? The first energy level has one subshell or one sublevel, and that's called the 1S. Energy level 2 is now is going to introduce a new sublevel. It's going to have <coughs> two sublevels. What do you think they're going to be called? Two P is going to be one of them, but it's also going to have two S and two P, just like that boarding house had the S room on the second floor and it had the P room, all right, for that code that you guys were looking at. Energy level three comes along. How many sublevels do you think it's going to have? Three sublevels. It's going to have three S. What else? Three P and? 3D. So look, the D sublevel, guys, is not introduced until you get to that third energy level. Okay? Energy level one only has the S. The P comes along on the second energy level. Energy level three, you see that D sublevel. Now, how many sublevels do you think four is going to have? Four. Absolutely. Look at all the patterns here. That's all it's about is those patterns. What are they going to be called on that fourth energy level? Look at you guys. I feel like I'm in church. You guys are reciting something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's all about the patterns here, folks. Okay, This will actually continue. If we go to 5, it will add, add on another one. I think that after F, it is G, and then it's H. But we, we, we won't go that far. Why do you think we actually won't go that far? 
It's doing too much. We actually run out of elements, folks. There are not that many elements that exist currently that actually go up to G and H. All this stuff, when we talk about the sublevels and when we get into their shapes in just a second, all right, it's all based on theoretical equations, and that's what we're going to see here. The other thing you have to know, so kind of quantum number two is a big one because not only is it talking about, you know, it's located within energy levels, it's dealing with these orbitals, folks, and this is something we're going to talk about throughout the year. So the orbitals or the sublevels also have shapes, and this is something you have to know. Okay, so we're going to add this still on the same page, the shapes of the orbitals. So S, its shape is a sphere, not a circle. What's the difference? Three-dimensional. So if you put a circle down on your test, it's going to be wrong, folks. All of these are in three dimensions. So it's hard to draw those, but you've got to do your best so that you can remember. So how I draw a sphere is something kind of like this, all right, where it shows that, it, hey, it's got a 3D shape to it. it makes you a pyramid. Not a pyramid, good guess. It's actually a, a dumbbell. It's a dumbbell shape. You don't know what a dumbbell is like that? All right. Really? All right. Now, how many orbitals, guys? How many orbitals do we have on that P sublevel? P contains how many? Three. So really, you have one along the x-axis, the y-axis, and then I can't really draw because it it's three dimensions, but along the z-axis. Have you guys ever heard of the z-axis? No. No. It goes right out at you. So. Dumbbell. We call it the clover yeah, shape. Yeah, three circles thingy. <laughs> like that. It's kind of like that. That's as far. And then what about F? Eight. Finger. It's actually too complex because, guys, this D actually has four other orbitals, right? Because the D has five. I can't draw them all. I'm going to show you pictures here in just a second. Here's what they all look like. That's the overview. I'm going to show you each one individually. Guys, the S again is a sphere. All right, it gets bigger. Notice the 1S is small. 2S gets larger because, again, it has more energy. All right, 3S gets even bigger. Our P orbital looks something like this. You've got all three right here. All right, you've got the Z axis, the X axis, and the Y axis as far as what they're labeling. When it comes together, it looks like this. You've got empty space in between. That's what we call a node. And you've got the lobes on either side. <laughs> the D, you can see there's five. So they have that clover leaf shape for four of those. And then this guy right here looks kind of like a baby pacifier. I can't draw it or anything. That's weird looking. All right. And then it gets even crazier right here. There's the F ones, kind of like a flower shape. I don't know. Guys, the ones that you need to be aware of, are the S and the P. Those are the ones that we're going to talk about a lot this year. Hang on, don't pack up just yet. What you guys need to take from all of this is that SPDIF 1357. Know the number of orbitals that each sublevel contains. As far as the shapes go, you got to know that S is a sphere, P is a dumbbell, D you can say it's a clover, but S and P are the two you need to know the shapes for.